Do you know that little assertion overload that makes your attention asking for a message? We all have done that, at least once. In theory, it's a good idea, but in the reality, it's just a code smell. They are like comments, the wrong solution for a real problem. And we want to avoid unnecessary comments not only in our source code, but also in our tests. Let me show you. Here we can find a simple MS test project that you can grab as a patron, by the way. And we have here a simple test, nothing fancy. This test is creating an account balance with a starting value, then we do a deposit, and then we'll check if the total amount has been increased with the value of our deposit. Often people will add this message to the assertion, mainly with two calls. One, they want to improve the test readability, and the other one is to improve the feedback result that you get when you run your tests in a pipeline, for example. But this comes at a cost. First, I have the cost of writing the message itself. It may be simple, it might be more complex, you may do it a lot, so it's an extra effort that you need to, to do. But also, you have the cost of maintaining that message. And we know that any single comment, any single literal like this one, usually will get into a point where it's out of sync with reality. That's one of the main reasons to avoid comments in the source code. And the value provided by the message is often questionable. Let me just run this test to show you why. If we introduce an error by changing this 5 to 4 and we run the tests, we can observe that the message is in fact here, but it doesn't bring extra value because from the test naming, I already know that the amount should be increased and I know that the expected value was 15 and I got 14. This extra line doesn't bring a lot of value to what I'm looking for when I'm Look into this test. In other words, if I go to the source code, I know the test method, the test method is clear, I quickly find the reason for this test be failing. So as I told you, you should look into test assertions in the same way that you look into code comments. You may argue that one of the main reasons for testing is documentation. But instead of doing this documentation using those literals, what you should do instead is having self-documenting code. And by the way, that's one of the reasons why XUnit nowadays doesn't accept those assertion messages in most of the assertion types that they have. So what we should do instead? One of the first things is avoiding assertions like this one, where we evaluate the condition and check if that condition is true, and then we provide a message, for example. And why do we want to avoid those? Because that expression will not be clear when we are looking to the test result. So this is one of the first things that you want to keep an eye on. The next recommendation is using a human readable notation for your assertions. You can do that with libraries like Blunt Assertions, the one that I really like, or for example with Shoodly, like in this case right here. And as you can see, the assertion is self-described, it's easier to read. Not only that, but the feedback that you get from running that test is better than the other one. You can see by the amount of detail that you get from here and how descriptive it is. You may have noticed that even then I kept that message right here. But in fact, I think that you shouldn't be doing it. You should avoid it and completely remove it as far as in your test name, it's clear what you are testing right here. As an example, if the test name was when a deposit, then the amount is updated, it wouldn't be as clear to me one of the possible reasons for seeing that the uh, amount th doesn't match the expectation. So make sure that you name your tests properly. You also want to make sure that you only assert one thing per test. And when I say assert one thing, I'm not saying using only one line for assertion. I mean asserting one behavior. Why? Because otherwise, that test will have a broad scope and it will be difficult to you to understand when you have an error, the reason for it. That's why you see assertion messages being often used in things like end-to-end -end tests, because one test tends to cover a huge scope and asserting multiple things at once. So in a nutshell, make sure that you name your tests properly, install a library that gives you human readable assertions, like fluent assertions or shrewdly, assert one single behavior per test, and when, even then, you feel that a message will help you to understand what the test is doing, try to refactor that test code instead. And by the way, another thing that you want to avoid in your tests is loops, and let me explain you why in this video right here. I will see you soon. In meanwhile, keep it simple.